Alright, lesson 1.7, solving problems involving objects. This will be our last lesson of our uh, first unit here on measurement. Um, this is a good one to end off with because what we kind of do is combine everything we've learned in this unit to put into one. So, a composite object comprises two or more distinct shapes. To determine the volume of a composite object, identify the distinct objects that it has. So for instance, like the one that we have right down here, um, that's an example of a hemisphere and a cylinder. So if you want to calculate the volume, uh, sorry, you'd calculate the volume of each object, then add the uh, volumes together, and then you'd simply have it all. Um, and when we deal with surface area, that's the one that's going to be a little bit more daunting. So uh, this first example, anyways, involves volume. Term the volume of this composite object to the nearest tenth of a cubic centimeter. So what I'll do here is I will just break it down. We'll have the volume, then I like to use a little subscript. You can write a cylinder, draw a little picture of it if you like. Mine's pretty ugly, but... Uh, and we know that in order to calculate the area of a cylinder, it should be on your formula sheet that we take the area of the base, being a circle, and we multiply it by the height. So I'm going to write that even further as pi r squared being the circle. So let's deal with this. I have my pi, my radius they tell me is 18, and my height is 32. Not too shabby. Let's get the calculator out. Take our pi, multiply it by 18 squared, and then times it by 32. Right, and we find out that we have a volume of 32,572.03263. I'm going to use a lot of decimals here just to make sure that I don't round too early. Now, the volume of the hemisphere. Uh, anyways, volume of a hemisphere. Well, the volume of a sphere was 4 thirds pi r cubed, and then if we divide it in half, we would just go like 2. And you can even simplify that if you like. You can write this as uh, 2 thirds pi r squared. Essentially what we do is we just divide that portion in half, so the 4 gets divided in half to give you a 2. Okay. So now let's uh, substitute in, my radius being 18. So, whoops, on my calculator we'll have 2 thirds times the pi times the 18 raised to the power of 3. And we get 12,214.51224. Now, to get the volume total, all we have to do is we have to take these two amounts right here and add them together. And when you add them together, since they're asking to the nearest tenth, you get. 44,786.5 centimeters. Since you were dealing with volume, of course, it should be cubed. That would be our final answer, just like that. Okay. Now, let's kick it up a notch. Now we're dealing with surface area. Now, at first you might think, well, it's not, not too bad. Um, you have a pyramid here, and then you have a cube. Well, where it becomes a little bit difficult, and maybe not even difficult, but you just got to think anyways, is that if you notice that the bottom of the pyramid is no longer there, and also the top of that um, cube is no longer there. So you've got to take that into account. All right? So let's start out with the surface area of the cube. Now, of course, we didn't review this yet, um, but it's something that I'm kind of expecting you to know. For instance, the front side here is just side squared or length times width. Well, let's see how many of those sides we have. We have four around the uh, lateral area and one on the bottom. Normally it would be six, but we don't have that top one. So I'm going to write this as 5s squared. And the dimensions here, of course, are also 5. So we really have 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125 meters squared. Remember, dealing with surface area. So retain that answer. Make sure you remember that one. So we've dealt with the um, the lateral portion of the um, cube and the bottom. Now we have to deal with the surface area of the pyramid. All right, well, if you recall, we have, uh, or taking a look here, you have four triangles. Well, they tell you that the base is five, the height of this one is four, so the area of a triangle is one half base times height, but in this situation we have four of them, so I'm going to put a four out in front. And you can simplify the 4 and the 1 half that gives you 2. So we really have just 2 bh. So your base being 5 and your height being 4. 
5 times uh, the 4 is 20 times 2 gives you 40 meters squared. Then your final surface area total, you just add those two together and you get 165 meters squared. So those are your two answers that you basically bring into here. And this gives us our final solution. Okay. Move to the next page. One last example. All right, example three. Um, I like this example because, again, we're looking for the surface area of a composite object. It's a little bit more difficult. If you look here, we have a triangular prism where we uh, do not uh, need the bottom of that part or the top of the rectangular prism. All right. This one's going to be a little more, more difficult because when you think about um, the cube made things quite a bit easier last time because they're all the same dimensions. So let's deal with the surface area of the rectangular prism. Okay. And uh, one thing before we get started here, since it's a tool shed and um, you know real life problem like this, we're going to assume that we don't need to worry about the surface area at the bottom. Okay, so I'm not going to deal with the bottom, this 4 by 6 that's on the bottom. I'm just going to deal with the four sides that go around. So I'm going to label this side as being A and that side as being B. So of course we have two side A's, so I'm just going to write that, two side A's. And then we also have two side B's. So I would encourage you to do that, just write down, it, it keeps um, your head straight about what's going on and also lets me know that you know what you're doing. So side A, it has dimensions 4 by 5. And side B has dimensions, let's see, 6 by 5. Okay. So we have 4 times 5 is 20, times 2 is 40, plus 30 and 60, that gives me 100, and I think we're dealing with feet, yeah, feet squared. So let's keep that uh, answer in mind. Now, we got to deal with the surface area of the triangular prism. So, uh, when you deal with these, a lot a good idea is just to identify what shapes you have. You have two triangles, so um, let's deal with those two triangles. Okay, and then you have plus two rectangles, and check to make sure those rectangles are the same. Are they the same? Yes, they're the same. All right, the dimension is going to be whatever that side is. Those look to be the same, and the length. So, the two <coughs> um, triangles we have. Remember, for a triangle, it's base times height divided by 2, so I'm going to have base times height divided by 2 times two of them, since there are two, like so, plus the two rectangles, 2 times length and width. Now let's start substituting in and see how far we can get here. We have 2, we have our base of our triangle right here, is going to of course be 4. Okay, the height they tell you is 3. We'll divide that by 2, so that one's easy. Let's come over here. Now the length of that rectangle we know is going to be 6. The width, that's where our problem comes. And you might have noticed that right away, so we're going to have to do ourselves a little bit of work using Pythagoras. So I'm just going to do this over here. If I take that triangle and blow it out, you'll see that we have a height of 3, and half of it must be 2. So using Pythagoras, you'll have 2 squared plus 3 squared, and I'm just going to call this our S for slant, maybe. S squared. 2 squared is 4, plus 9 gives you 13 is equal to S squared, or S is equal to the square root of 13. So I'm going to take that answer and put it right inside right there just so you can see where that one came from. Okay, change back to red here. Let's finish this guy off. Those twos well cancel, so we have 12 plus 2 times 6 is 12, so this will be 12 root 13. Now I'll put all that into my calculator. Oops. 12 plus 12 root 13 is equal to 55.2666, all right? Now, in order to get the surface area total, you're going to add those two yellow guys that I highlighted. I'll just zoom out just so you can see what they were. We have those two amounts together, so basically we're just adding 100 to that, and so it's going to be 155. Checking with the question, I believe it said to the nearest square foot. So we have 155 feet squared as your final answer. Notice how I circled it. All right, so um, volume one's very basic. You just add each individual one together. The surface area, though, what you need to identify first is what shapes you have. And then look, is there any sides that are no longer there? For instance, up here we saw that 
the bottom of the uh, triangular prism was no longer there, and the top of the rectangular uh, prism was no longer there. Okay, that concludes this lesson.